What's up guys and gals? It is time for another Kangen Omega. Kangen Omega chapter review for chapter 256 entitled Messenger. Now, now, before we get underway with this one, oh baby, this, if this isn't at least 30 minutes, I'm not doing my job correctly because I consider this being an hour long stream. I hummed and hawed because I have so many ideas floating around in my mind to be passive aggressive, to be sarcastic, to make fun of, you know, most of the community or to be serious about it or, you know, there's so many directions I could take with this chapter. So what I've decided to do is just say, fuck it, I'm not going to be looking at the time clock, which Believe it or not, I actually do. That's what I love about using OBS. I generally look at the time stamp and if I'm like, okay, I'm at the 18, 20 minute mark, try to wrap it up even when I go on tangents and rants in my reviews. I do try to keep it around the 20 odd minute mark, right? Um, but for this one, we're not looking at it. I don't care. Because we're going in deep with this one. You know why? Because I had a day off today. And you know what I did? I decided that after reading the Kengen Omega chapter, I did that thing that I swore I wouldn't do, and well, you guys apparently you can call me a liar. I went to the comment section. That's right, I went to the comment section. I went to Discord, I went to YouTube, I watched all my favorite YouTubers, I read all the Discords, the Reddits, and stuff like that, and. Yeah. So, right out of the gate, I really liked the chapter. It's not the best chapter, it's not a perfect chapter. I'd give it like a seven, maybe an eight at best, but probably a seven, seven, right? I'm gonna give it a seven, okay? It's a C grade, it's not great, it's not bad, it's just, it's good, it's fine. There's some things I liked about it, right? So right out of the gate, if that's all you care about, did I like the chapter? Yes, I like the chapter. It's not the be all and end all of chapters, it's a chapter and I liked it, okay? So if that's all you're here for, we've gotten that out of the gate. Okay, we have to go through this page by page because I have things to talk about. I even brought props. Trust me, when I said this is going to be over 30 minutes. Okay, so, you know, granted, wouldn't it be funny if this is the one video that goes like under 30 minutes when I say, like, this is going to be a short one, 35 minutes long, and this is the one that I claim is going to be over half an hour, and then it only be... Anyways, alright, so... This is kind of unplugged, unscripted. I'm not going to do a whole lot of editing in between if I can help it. So that being said, let's jump into the chapter. So this isn't a live reaction. I've already read the chapter twice, um, but I do have to go through it page by page, sort of, to, to get the full context here, all right? So first things first, the chapter title is Messenger. Whatever. It's, you know, we know what the end part of the chapter is, you know. Give him a message, you know. I mean, he could have ended the line with give a message. We'll, we'll talk about the messenger title uh, when we get there. But anyways, so Ryan, as we know, I thought it was a fan favorite. Apparently I'm wrong. Everybody hates him now. I don't know why. Anyways, so he let go of the sword and stuff and said, don't go, at the beginning of this chapter, said, don't go jumping to conclusions, fuckface. You thought I'd rely on a measly old weapon? Otakamaru's. Nothing but a tool. Strike one as far as the community is concerned. But with anybody, and as I said, we're going to be jumping through sarcasm, passive aggressive reading comprehension, a lot of dislikes on this video. Anybody with reading comprehension, uh, somewhere around here at the very least, you know? Uh, I, mean, I mean, up here is proper reading comprehension, but somewhere down here, could understand that maybe before judging this line, maybe read the rest of the goddamn chapter and you'll understand why he says Otakimaru is nothing but a tool. It is a tool. It is 100% a tool. That's why Edio sent Ryan there to use it as a tool, a training tool. I'm sorry he didn't put training in front of tool. But it is a training tool. It did train him. And now people are mad because it trained him. So right out of the gate, first panel of the first page, I'm already mad at the community. I'm already sitting here going, <sighs> you know? So anyways, yes, Otakamaru is nothing but a tool. And I'm like, oh. and I'm, uh, granted, anybody doing a reaction video 
I understood their gripes because the moment I saw that, I was like, "Really, really? Like nothing? No super demonic sword or anything like that? We're we're gonna go?" With, you know, at first I was a little miffed at that too. Not like, "Oh my God, screw this manga." But I admit, if you're doing a reaction, and I did watch a couple. I watched two reaction videos before doing this review, and initially they were like, "Yeah," and they had the same thing as me, like. Really? So he brought this sword just to say, like, fuck the sword? Like, really? But once you understand the rest of the chapter, it makes sense. But I noticed that nobody's recounting that. Everyone looks at this, says no, even after reading the rest of the chapter. That bothers me, because it means you don't have any reading comprehension. So, uh, yeah. So automatically, I'm already mad at the community after reading the chapter and stuff. But I will understand a first reaction. Yeah, this line out of context does bother people and it bothered me okay so then we have Willem right and I like Willem I've told you guys that before I like Willem and stuff but I knew he was gonna lose in the next couple chapters I knew he was gonna lose so it doesn't bother me that so he's like all right so removal he's calling it Gui Hun but it's removal so he says doesn't improve my stamina I don't remember removal improving stamina period but apparently it does uh, but yeah I, I could be wrong about that I don't remember that I thought it boosted all physical characteristics as an endurance, durability, physical stats and stuff, but it didn't actually include your stamina. In fact, it lowered your stamina because you have a time frame sort of like the advance. I was sort of comparing, I think I'm getting mixed up with the advance, but anyways. Um, so he said, it doesn't improve my stamina, but the same goes for him. True, but he's not using the removal. So, man, that means I have the upper hand. Since I have Superman Syndrome on top of 100% release. Okay, so his argument is, I have 100% release just like, or removal, just like Ryan does. Fine dandy. But I also have Superman Syndrome, which once again, he's claimed to have the strongest muscles, yeah, 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 and we'll get to that. He claimed that, and I brought this up last chapter review, he claims to have the strongest muscles. I'm like, okay, mixed with the removal, I can see why he's making that argument. But I have speculation, and it's proven wrong here. But, yeah, okay, so his his reasoning is somewhat sound, and once again, we don't know the level of Superman Syndrome. As I said, I doubt, I always will doubt, Waka has the best version of Superman Syndrome we're ever going to see in the manga, and I'm going to hold that 100%. But, 100% release, you get it? It's a pun. But, yeah, so either way, his reasoning is somewhat sound, and he goes in and says, what does this moron think he's doing? Conserving his strength, I'll put him in the ground before he can release 100%, which once again, can't you just like, blank, boom, instant transmission, Goku, and boom, you're in 100 Like, Ryan doesn't need to, ha, 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 like he doesn't need to key charge up Super Saiyan Trunks for an episode against Cell level to reach 100%. I was pretty sure it was like, oh, bam. You know, it was sort of not instantaneous, but you can go into removal pretty much at will. I mean, Willem just did it last chapter. So it's funny that he's arguing like, okay, so before he can even go into 100%, while you're thinking this, he could do 100% if he wanted to. So weird line. But anyways, so he goes in. Wu Clan ultimate technique, 13-fold kill. I don't know why it's called 13-fold. Perhaps... Had we seen the completion of this technique, it was sort of a wham bam, a 13 hit attack. I don't know why it would be called 13 fold. But anyways, he basically, he goes into a stance. He jumps Ryan pretty quick. He goes right up to Ryan and Ryan seemingly doesn't, doesn't move very far. Blinds him with one pump to get a blind strike in on him, right? Right with the fist, like so blind, boom. Right? That's that's what he's trying to pull off. I'm like, all right, cool. It, it, it looks like a cool technique, right? But Ryan, by the time he was blinded, he already basically saw, like, saw this coming. Maybe he had seen the technique before. We don't know. But instantly, just boom, kicks up with his right leg and slams into his face before he can get the move off. So he slams his ass. Uh, and to Willem's credit, Big kick, surprise kick, doesn't fall, staggers back, and like, oh, what the hell? Ryan's already appeared behind him and goes straight for a dodge and a liver punch, right? 
This is called the Cure Fl Family Tradition Technique Depth Charge. And I'm like, okay. Badass name, first of all, whether it's named after the drink, the Depth Charge, which is also named after, of course, the, you know, the submarine, a Depth Charge attack and stuff like that. Um, I wonder if it works sort of like, um, uh, what is it called? The, the Super Hockey, there's so many versions in anime and stuff like that, but the, the, uh, Super Hockey, uh, the invasive one where you can like deet 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 and grab the belt and move it and stuff like that. Um, anyways, from One Piece and stuff like that, but either way I'm wondering if it's like, oh, it doesn't actually damage the skin, like your body looks like it's fine, like the, the heart stopping technique from Kill Bill, all those things where it's like, okay, you don't see any outer damage, but you're like, it's a ticking time bomb on the organs, like a depth charge, right? It's like, doo, doo, doo. you didn't even see it enter, and then, boom, blow up from the inside sort of idea. Um, in the drink, a depth charge, of course. Some people mistake this for a boiler maker, but they're wrong. In drinking, in alcoholism, uh, that I used to take part in, uh, a depth charge is when you take a full shot glass, you get a full mug of beer, you take a shot glass of... Uh, the variations change, but basically hard liquor, whether it's rum, whiskey, whatever, and you drop the shot glass and all, you go thunk, and it goes, drops right down into the bottom of the, of the mug of beer, and you chug the mug of beer. That is a depth charge. You've added a whole thing of two ounces of rum or whatever, shot glass and all, and you drink while the shot glass is sitting in your mug. That's a depth charge. People mistake this with the Boilermaker. A Boilermaker is the same idea, except you have the mug of beer, you take the shot glass, two ounces of rum, whiskey, vodka, whatever, and usually it's a harder, like it's rum or whiskey or something, and then you pour that, you don't drop the whole thing. Hence, depth charge, drop the whole glass and all. Um, a Boilermaker is, you, you know, to light the fire, right? So, anyways, either way, there's a fun fact there, but, this, I thought I'd heard of this before, but after watching a couple of YouTubers and stuff, nobody's bringing up that, oh, we got to see the depth charge again. For some reason, the Cure, Flan F bleh, Cure Family Technique depth charge rung a bell for some reason. So I was like, I think this move was used before. I think we've seen this attack before, but I didn't have the time to go over 300 plus chapters of manga to make sure I was right or wrong. So I said, you know what? If it's a new technique, whatever, it's it's an attack. It's not like it's something stupid like copy. I'll admit copy's dumb. So whatever. Depth charge. It's got a cool name. It's just a, it's a liver shot, whatever. It's a counter liver shot. And it seemed to uh, attack some ribs there. It seemed to do a little bit of damage. And it's like, whoa, okay. So Willem backs up. And Ryan basically said, what's the matter? Hold the enemy who still, while sweating, however, so he's exerting himself, but he has yet to use removal at any percentage. Granted, I am curious, have we ever seen a Cure uh, family member actually use, like, if they can go, like Ryan, 100%, he can use removal at 100%. Can he dial it up to, like, I'm only going to uh, do a Frieza thing? I'm only using 10% of my power. You know, can he switch it on and off. I feel like we've seen that, but I'm just misremembering. Anyways, going forward, fact is he's not using any version of removal anyways. So he says, what's that holding out on me? And Willem realizes like, oh damn. All right, feeling it now. So he goes into a grappling position, right? He's doing Cosmos thing. And then immediately Ryan says, yeah, that's what I thought. No better use for your monster strength than your grappling. Like, once again, acknowledging like, oh, ho, 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 removal and Superman syndrome, aren't you such a big boy, right? And then runs forward, dashes, Ryan lets him grab his leg and he's going full tilt. Ryan's just smirking, laughing the whole time and says, nope, stops him in his tracks. And once again, we'll find out why this is later, why he's able to do all this outside of the removal, right? We'll find out. The fans don't like it. The community doesn't like it. I don't know why they like it. Uh, or, or I don't know why they don't like it. Seeing as how back in the first manga, Ashura, that was part of the deal in the first 20 chapters. But I digress. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Anyways, so he stops him. Full blown, no big deal. And says, strongest muscles in the world? Talk about false advertising. You 
fucking kidding me? I can think of at least two meatheads who are beefier than you. Obviously, Julius and Waka, which once again basically confirms it's not name dropped, but it confirms that, yeah, what I thought, I was like, I, I take this with a grain. It could be right because removal, of course, boosts your abilities and stuff, but I'm like, Unless his Superman syndrome is stated to be close to Waka's, I don't see how he's still got better muscles than Waka or Julius. Toa's another option there, you know, so Ryan, of course, is talking about his homeboys, right? Gotta represent. And he's immediately like, yeah, no, no. Julius and Waka got every bit on you. You are not the most muscly guy. Fuck the hell off. So I'm like, all right. Funnily enough, once again, the community calling this out, like they weren't bitching at Willem, for saying it last time. This is what I don't understand. The community is, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. You're always unhappy. Stop reading the manga if you're this unhappy. Because last chapter, I remember everyone so pissed off that Willem claimed to have the strongest muscles. Then, this chapter, halfway through, Ryan's like, base one, you got the best muscles, please bitch. You do not have the best muscles. And now everybody's mad at Ryan. You can't have it both ways. You cannot sit there and fucking complain about Willem saying, Oh, I got the best muscles. I got removal. I got the advance. I got the shabba da ba da ba from Shen. I've got everything. I've got the Buddha's Nirvana itself. And everyone's like, fuck this guy. He's full of shit. And the next chapter, another character tells him he's full of shit. And you're like, bad writing. Stick to your guns or shut the fuck up is all I'm trying to say here, people. So, either way, I'm with Ryan on this one because, once again, in my review, I said, could it be possible? Yeah, because it does make sense if you write it down on paper, Superman Syndrome plus removal would do a lot of uh, extracurricular activities, so to speak. Um, but Ryan's like, yeah, no, 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 man. You you are not the pinnacle of muscles. There's a few guys above you still. Even with all your super powered techniques, it doesn't matter. So anyways, he grabs him and throws him. And he, and he uh, Ryan, of all people, goes, Phew, and flips him and gets rid of him, right? Um, and that's when Willem, and here's the big thing about the chapter. Here's the big thing. Okay, so Willem, and this is why I brought, brought props. You guys ready for this? Oh, I'm so excited. If anybody made it this far, um, you guys are going to be excited. So, what the hell is going on is what he said. How is he overpowering me? He notices Otakamaru, the big-ass sword, sitting there on the ground. And he grabs it. He picks it up. And he goes, huh? Oh. The fuck. Right? Okay. Okay. This, this is where shit hits the real fan, and this is why I brought props. Well, I tried to do the whole thing unplugged, but that didn't really work out. Thankfully, when I heard the knock at the door, it was a good point that I could sort of drag out the, oh, we'll see, and then I could quickly rush out. Anyways, what can you do? Um, so yeah, either way, what happens is Willem, of course, tries to pick up Otakamaru, Drops the sword, and he's like, what the hell, right? And everyone's all pissed off about this. Okay, so let's get into this. So, he says, what the fuck? Immediately, Ryan says, heavier than it looks, huh? You won't find another sword of that length that weighs over 20 kilos. 20 kilos being kilograms. You know, if Americans can't use the metric system, let me translate. It's about 45 pounds to 50 pounds, okay? Roughly, give or take. It's over 20. He says it's over 20, meaning... So based on just a minimum of 20, it's about 45 pounds. So we can argue that this thing is anywhere from 45 to 50 pounds easily. Easily, uh, I can make an argument it's about 50 pounds, okay? All right, so 45 to 50 pounds, right? That is heavy as fuck for a sword, okay? For example, and this is once again why we have props, ladies and gentlemen. This sword, this sword that you guys see in my background is an actual sword. It's not sharpened for obvious reasons, right? It was sharpened at one time, but then I said, you know, for, you know, purposes. But as you can see, it's not nearly as long, right, as Otake Maru and stuff. It's not nearly half, you know, the length of my body or anything like that. 
Um, and this thing, last weighed, which once again, this weighs a shit ton actually, the, you know, the guard on it, but, um, you know, compared to most guards, but this thing only weighs about a pound and a half to two pounds. That's about as much as it weighs uh, as far as I've been able to get on scale. The only scale that I found that weighed it more than that said it was about 2.8 pounds. Okay, so this thing is about 2.8 pounds, right? This is a full-size katana, as you guys can see. This is a real full-size katana, okay? 2.8 pounds. That thing weighs about 50. We're just gonna go for context, all right? This is why we have props. Okay, so. Given that, he says he won't find another sword that of that length that weighs over 20 kilos. Last time I checked in the previous chapter, he even chastised Willem, chastised Ryan, saying, hey, he's an idiot. Using a sword over that length, dual wielding with the scabbard, that's a dumb that's a two-handed blade. Meaning the weight is obviously gonna be more, and you're supposed to two-hand it. And granted. Even my katana here, katana is like this at this length, isn't actually meant. There is an actual set school for dual wielding in most schools of practice and stuff. As far as I understand now, I'm no expert. Once again, I'm not a swordsman, so I don't know. But granted, this does have, you know, obviously the hilt for wielding two-handed. This is not a short sword by any means. It's not a wakasashi, you know, anything like that. So... I could assume that this is meant to be wheeled two-handed, and it doesn't weigh three pounds. So, once again, we're going back, using logic, and I'm sorry, King Community, we're going to use some of that, uh, but logic is that he's not supposed to be one-handing this sword anyways, according to Willem. Now, the fact that Willem just tried to one-hand it, and it weighs... Not twice, not three times, not four times, but in abundance, a crazy amount of weight. And just wait, there's more. Normally I do enter a GIF here, but I, I, I think I can do it. I could spit like in Scary Movie, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, but yeah, so just wait, there's more. You know, this one's a screamer. All right, so. Ryan does all this, right, and says, you know, the sword weighs so much. Then he goes on to explain, 20 kilos shouldn't be a problem, you know, with the strongest muscles. I mean, he's taunting him, and he's not wrong in the world, right? It's the center of gravity that's tricky about this. So he goes on to explain, and we see it's clearly different from your average sword. The weight's not distributed evenly throughout, and we see the four points that... The, the bottom of the hilt is heavier, the uh, you know the pummel is heavier, the hilt is hit heavier, midway through the sword, and the tip of the sword are all, it's not even weight. This is balanced weight. This is, uh, I mean, it's not a perfect sword, you know, it's, it's a rather relatively cheap katana. It's a real katana, but it's, you know, so, I mean, it's balanced weight, but I mean, I can do this, right? No problem, right? Now, if I were to do this, Obviously, it's a little more unbalanced. There's more weight here, right? We can we can tell that by you know just applying the same amount of force, and I could you know, but I have to apply more force to my forearm to allow this to stay straight. When if I do this, way less. I could do this way longer. I'm not feeling any strength because why? This weighs less by the end than it does at the beginning. Okay, so given this logic called physics. I know, I know, we're getting into crazy territory, is that, all right, given all this, given all this information, Willem continues to attack and says, that makes it even more unwieldy than its actual weight should, you see? So many people have argued this. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to conduct a, a, a slight experiment, just, just, just a small one, okay? To explain why someone, because everyone's complaining with Superman syndrome and a dude, blah, 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 should be able to immediately, like, this shouldn't be an issue. It only weighs about 50 pounds at best, right? Okay. So, we're going to do a demonstration here. We're going to do a demonstration. And this is going to be the fun part. Okay. So, 
Here, ladies and gentlemen, you know what? We'll use the sword. I was going to use the pencil, but we'll use the sword. You got to stand up for this one. Okay. So I'm going to move the chair out of the way, right? Hopefully everyone can hear me. All right. So we have our katana. As I said, look, I can pick this up one handed anywhere. I can flip it. I can flop it, you know, because I expect the sword to weigh X amount, right? Okay. So I'm going to put this here. Now, now, for our set piece, we have a 25 pound dumbbell, okay? Now granted, I can stand here, let's get the posture correct, and I can curl this. I can curl a 25 pound dumbbell. It's heavy. I feel the strain on my shoulder, on my bicep, my tricep. No issue, right? But it definitely is heavy, okay? Now granted, this is half of the weight of that sword. Now, if I were to place this dumbbell right here, okay, so we see it. And actually, we'll put the sword even. Uh, well, actually, we'll put the sword right here. Okay, I'm doing this all off script, guys. I'm just trying to make a point. So, if I were to expect a sword to weigh X amount, which actually, yeah, sure, fuck, we'll do it this way. I expect the sword to weigh X amount, and I'm in the middle of something, and I'm willing, and I'm ready to go, and I'm like, all right, what can I use? What can I use to defend myself? Okay, sword, and I lunge and grab, okay? I expect it, my muscles expect this thing to only weigh so much, so I reach, I grab, and I'm ready to go, right? Okay, if we can agree on that. Next up, however, let's say that thing only weighs less than three pounds. And yeah, so I can curl 25. We saw that. I could do multiple curls with 25. Very little problem with form. But if I expect this to weigh the same as that, and I go in the middle of adrenaline, ha ha ha. Did you see a problem with lunging forward and trying to grab 25 pounds? Now, let's double, let's double the difference Let's double the difference, by the way. Let's increase that to 50. Once again, I'm not the most in-shape guy in the world, but let's double that weight. Let's assume it still weighs the three pounds. Let's be generous. Let's say it weighs five pounds. Let's give it all of that, right? And still, people are complaining that a guy immediately went, what the? Fuck? And then he went, all right, shit. I can do the same thing. You see right now with one hand, I can do this with the 25 pound weight. But it doesn't mean that when I assume something weighs only three pounds and I go to lunge for it, I'm not going to, <sighs> you know, when it's three pounds, why would I do that? No, so he was taken by surprise. It doesn't matter whether you can lift something or not. I can also lift 50 pounds with one arm. It strains me, but I could do it. However, the fact is, if I thought it only weighed three pounds and I went to lift something 50, I would do this. <laughs> the fuck, right? So that's all that sequence shows. That's not proof of bullshit. Anybody who understands physics and how muscles work. The second part is the whole weight distribution because people said, okay, but then he had to, oh, oh he's got Superman syndrome and he had to, oh, like this, okay? Well, I'm gonna just point out to you that the center of gravity once again matters. The center of gravity 100% matters in this case because if you have a center of gravity on a sword, as I already proved, that look, I can hold this out easily. Right? Straight. This, because of the balance of gravity, it's a lot harder on my forearm. I can already feel it. If I let it go, you see how it's already waning? Because I'm not trying as hard? See that? It weighs the same, but the distribution of gravity matters across the blade of the sword. So, what would happen if I were to attach this 25 dumbbell to this? tip of the sword, and then try to do this. Well, I can show this in ease. It's gonna show off how out of shape I am. But once again, let's use the same arm that we were doing, 
As you can see, I can do a full form curl, straight laced, without issue. Now, can I do this? Nope. There we go. See? The distribution of weight matters so much. It's something called physics. It's science. So, I have just physically proved why nothing jobbing has happened here. The man was taken aback, assuming something he could pick up. He wasn't going all in 100% Demon's Bane Super Saiyan to pick up a sword that he assumed, you know, we all assume things, you know? If you were to go pick up a kitten, would you assume he weighed 40 pounds? No, so the moment you go, oh, come here, little guy, are you going, come here, and you know, flexing like this, are you doing that? Or are you going, oh, come here, you know? Nice, you know, light touch. So, first off, the amount of muscles you're using, the relevancy of using, your active brain using them, there's a million science reasons as to why this all makes sense. And the community refuses to see them or accept any of them. So, this sword that only weighs 50 pounds, and Superman Syndrome should be able to do it, once again, using the dumbbell as a prop, I've just proven. Just because with my biceps and my triceps, I can curl 25 without issue, doesn't mean I can lift 25 outstretched because you're using different muscle groups for one thing, but you're also, the extension is different. If the weight is uneven, if the weight, and I used it with the sword, same thing. As long, if more of the weight closer to your body is going to be easier to lift than weight that is at a further distance from your body. And we see if the four points are true, then on this sword, then actually it weighs more at the tip than it does at the beginning. And it would explain why anybody not practiced with this, you know, sword would be like, I don't get it. It doesn't matter how strong you are. The Superman syndrome, the muscles are irrelevant if you're not used to the technique. It's why when I was doing basketball, I constantly used uh, not a medicine ball necessarily, but a ball that you had to slam down to dribble. It wasn't filled with air, it was filled with something else and I forget how it worked, but the ball itself weighed uh, three times as much as a standard basketball filled with air. And so it made us use our forearms a lot more to make us be able to dribble way quicker, way faster, not even feel the difference, right? It was all about speed, it was about stamina, right? What it was doing was building our stamina. We were trying to do the same techniques using a basketball that weighed three times as much as a standard one filled with air. And so it's the same principle here. Nobody, for some reason, has, has, has brought this up. This makes total sense that even someone with a stupid amount of muscles wouldn't be able to just react and be like, what the hell, right? So, and here's the thing. The moment he realizes it, he goes, oh shit, it's a knee-jerk reaction, so no problem there. He immediately picks it up with two hands and goes, fuck, this thing is wobbly, and immediately attacks. He attacks with it. So once again, his muscles matter, the Superman syndrome matters, he's just like, this thing's unbalanced as fuck, and he attacks anyways. So I'm seeing no issue, no issue whatsoever from a physics standpoint, from a muscle, and I just proved it. If you guys don't like my experiment, do your own and send it, send me the link where you prove that I'm wrong. But either way, I just, you know, with my own muscles, I proved, which aren't Superman syndrome by any means, but I just proved in the same context, triple the weight, double the weight with someone who could do that. It, the result would be the same. Someone can curl more than they can outstretch. That's a fact. That's a fact. It's the way muscles work. It's the way weight. It's the way physics work. So, anybody complaining about the, this, not listening. Not listening at all. Then the end part of the chapter is, of course, the next part. So, he attacks with the sword. Uh, Ryan stops it with his two fingers. Ching! You know, stops it, and boom! And then, you know, it bleeds a little bit, and he's like, yeah, no. And he goes, what's this strongest muscles in the world and he's doing it with no question 
Of course, once again, Willem is not used to this sword. He swung with, we can assume, most of his might, all of his might and stuff. But of course, it's going to be unbalanced because of the unbalance of the sword. Regardless, uh, he still does it. And then uh, Ryan's able to take it, swing it around like a boomerang. No big deal. He's swinging around like an umbrella. And he's just like, I told you, this was just a tool, didn't I? Now I can see the flow of power clear as day. Okay, now we're into problem number two. This one I don't have props for, unfortunately. But this is the second thing that people are bitching about the most. So, the whole tool argument. This tool, for Ryan to be able to wield it, which is what Edio told him to do. Why are you mad about this? Edio said, if you can master this sword, you'll get stronger. As in, this thing weighs way too fucking much, as just been proven. People say that Ryan doesn't have character development. We're seeing it after the fact. He's proving his development. He's proving, maybe not character, but his advancement. He's proving his training arc right now. He's trained, and he's showing off. He's showing off what he did. Otakimaru was a tool. Edio sent him to get it, saying, You will get stronger if you can master this blade. Look at him. He's twirling it like an umbrella. Someone with Superman syndrome in the removal is going, fucking thing, right? It's like going uh, behind, uh, going from a uh, little Mini Cooper to an 18 wheeler. Just because you're a good driver doesn't mean you can drive everything, right? You're gonna be a little like, all right, uh, where's the controls? Oh yeah, air brakes, gotta shift, blah, blah. It's a different style. You gotta get used to it. You need more than five seconds. So, the idea here is, once again, this was Ryan's, hey, I trained. Here's the, the fruits of my training. I learned the flow of power by mastering the sword. The sword is an unbalanced, heavy piece of shit, and the only way to wield it, like it's a normal katana, like it's this, effort, you know? Do you think I, you guys think that I could do what Ryan's doing? Like this, well, I can't really do it. This room is kind of small. Do you guys think I could twirl? I can twirl this thing no problem with a couple of fingers, right? Like, I can do this. I can do that no problem. Do you think I could twirl this? This 25-pound dumbbell now times two? Do you think I could do that with my fingers? Of course not. Of course I couldn't. Plus, it's unbalanced as fuck. So, point is, is that the idea that Ryan is able to take this unbalanced, uncharacteristically heavy sword and wield it like it's a piece of paper, like it's featherweight, like it's no big deal. He learned the flow of power. It's all fine. This is actually a good, you know what? Fuck the seven out of 10. I'm putting it eight, I'm putting it nine. Fuck you guys. I'm putting this as a nine because you guys want it, but you don't like how it's represented. He got all the training art. We're seeing the fruits of his training you guys just don't like the explanation on how it's training. Not my problem. You guys just don't see it. And it works out fantastic. He's like, I see the flow of power. And then because if, if Willem hadn't have said this, none of you would be bitching. None of you. Because what happens next is what the third thing people are bitching about. Oh, fuck. Now I get it. He didn't overpower me. He just kept me from using my power. He was holding down the point of force, just like the connect. And end of chapter, right? He gets cut across the head. We don't see the head completely sliced off, so maybe he cut him shallowly or something like that. But he says, bye bye messenger at the end of the chapter. Say hi to Gilbert from me. So two ways this could be is that he actually killed him and cut him down which would make sense for Ryan's character and he's saying oh he's the king of hell he's the demon of hell he's whatever yeah 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 say hi in hell boom you know be a messenger of death messenger of hell there's a lot of context there or he literally cut him beat him and said yeah 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 you'll survive if you if you got balls you'll survive and uh, c go crawling back to Gilbert and say who did this sort of idea there's two ways to look at this I'm not sure I'm 50 50 on the fence either way but going back to the flow of power thing oh Maybe let's start the campfire. So, anybody ever read Ashura? Ever? Anybody know a 
single part of the Nico style. Ever. Ever seen Oma fight? Ever. Flow of power, everyone is going. Flow of power, principles! If I hadn't quit alcohol, I'd be drunk as a skunk right now. Because, what are you guys talking about? Flow of power was used throughout all of Ashura. There was no principles in Ashura. How many times was Redirection Kata talking about understanding the flow of power and redirecting it? How many times was Water talked about reading the flow of power and being able to work your way around it? How many times was Adamantian Kata talked about taking it, reinforcing, and pushing it back on the opponent? Flow of power is the Nico style down to a fucking T, and the fact that Shen has been using it to the 11th degree, he's dialed that shit up to 11, called it principles, and everyone has fucking lost reading comprehension. Flow of power, yes, Ryan now understands how to read the flow of power just like Oma. Just because Willem, who never fought against a Nico style user, doesn't understand the flow of power, doesn't mean the flow of power is exclusive to principles. I'm not saying Ryan didn't get stronger than Oma right here, and that Ryan is not stronger than Oma right here. I'm not saying that Ryan's understanding and usage of the flow of power is not better than Oma's right now. What I'm saying is this whole flow of power is only exclusive to principles, which is all anybody's talked about, is fucking ridiculous. And I haven't seen a single person saying what I'm saying. It makes no sense. You know how many panels I went through trying to find him once again? I couldn't I couldn't spend all the time this Wednesday rereading the entire Ashura to find every snippet where they said flow of power. But multiple times when Oma was explaining the flow of power, especially in early fights, you know, in that street fight at the very beginning of the manga, during the Seki fight before even the cat tournament started and stuff, flow of power with Weeping Willow is literally described every time as flow of power. The Reading the flow of power, reversing it, and using it to your advantage. So this whole... Oh, he was reading my flow of power. Just Willem's only context is the connector. Because Gilbert doesn't use the fucking Nico style, people. It's not difficult. God damn. People hate this chapter for reading the wrong things into it and then bitch when they're wrong. I don't get it. You know what? Fuck it. This chapter is amazing. This chapter is only great. It's, it's a six to seven for me normally. But because of the community, it's boosted it up to an awesome nine because so many people are that brain dead. You know, I'm used to a bunch of meatheads reading like fighting manga and stuff like that. But people who like to think they're smart, oh, I'm an intellectual. And none of this, from a writing comprehension, I took one literary class in 11th grade, you know, think that this is terrible writing. Meanwhile, they're missing all the good writing. As I said, this is a perfect example of Ryan showing off. Okay, we knew Ryan went out after a defeat off screen, which people are mad at, whatever. You can be mad at it. But he went off screen to train, came back, is showing off his training, and people are mad at it. And it's so black and white, it's so easy. Yeah, Otakimaru is a tool. He used it to learn the flow of power. What did he say? I told you this was a tool, didn't I? Like, literally, Ryan, preach to the community. I told you this was just a tool, didn't I? Now I can see the flow of power clear as day. All Ryan has done, who was on par with Oma, now has Oma's eyes, which makes him vastly more deadly. I don't see the issue. I, I just don't. So anyways, hopefully that, that must have passed 30 minutes. If it's, I wonder if we broke an hour. I wonder. Maybe. Anyways, that's it for me with experiment and everything aside. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. As I said, I was going to do this as a stream. I thought about doing it as a stream. 
taking questions and stuff like that because so many of you are going to bitch. But I warned you at the beginning. I said sarcasm, passive aggressiveness, making fun, making fun, and having a good time. I was going to do it all, all in one thing. I was going to rant, tangent, passive aggressiveness, aggressiveness, uh, passiveness. I was going to do it all. And I, I think I covered all of my bases. Yeah. I didn't get super angry, so maybe I missed out on that one. But the other ones, I feel like I covered. So what did you guys think of the chapter, though? Let me know down in the comment section down below. And please, if you're mad that I called your ass out, hit that dislike button and tell me why in the comment section down below. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking for the hate. I want the cancel culture to come at me because I really don't give a fuck. I'm too old for your bu internet bullshit. So... Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as always. And I look forward to other people with who love the series, who still are like, yeah, I don't like the direction. I don't like the direction of King and Omega right now. And I think a lot of things are weak. But this isn't one of them. Complaining every week, drop the fucking series. I'm sorry. If you don't like it, drop it. It's what I did. And I'm still getting flack for dropping JJK. Because fans like it and I don't. Well, what did you want me to do? Sit here for the last six months and hate on every chapter? All I'm going to do is get hate. Why would I want negativity? So if you don't like Kengen right now, drop it. Pick it back up in a couple months. Stop reading hating. Stop hate watching. It's weird. It's weird. It's not healthy. And I hope you get some help. That's all I can say. That being said, have a good Wednesday, everybody. Hope your 2024 is going better than mine, and have a good one. Sayonara, everybody.